Good evening and welcome to the Pittsford Board of Education meeting. If you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Thanks, Jeff. Second. Thanks, Ted. Any edits? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. So before we have the approval of the minutes for this evening, um, last week we mentioned someone brought to my attention from the audience that um, they were questioning the documentation of public comment um, minutes and from this point forward we decided it's best with the amount of people that are participating in public comment that we are going to take account of those people that actually come to have a comment and those who um, give us write-in submissions and then anyone who's interested in hearing public comment of course we have a video available on YouTube after our meeting so you're able to see the full public comment session so with that, I would like to have a motion to approve the minutes. And Renee, I know you need to abstain. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah and Robin, any edits? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Board of Education reports. We have quite a few meetings coming up. Tomorrow is a busy day. We have board leadership tomorrow night. We also have legislative, which just a note that it's at Shadow Lake tomorrow um, due to a conflict at the Doubletree. And everyone can see the upcoming dates for your various committees. Um, I don't think anyone's impacted by steering other than myself, but that is a Zoom meeting. Okay. Dates to remember. The 4th which is Thursday, we do have an Allen Creek Elementary School visit at 715. Again, that is just a visit and not coffee. If I could just have a show of hands of those of you who plan to be there. Okay, it looks like everybody. Awesome, okay. And then the 11th of November, the schools will be closed for Veterans Day. And our next board meeting will be on the 16th of November. Financial report, Darren. Thank you. We have the treasury report for August. Again, because of being summer, there's not a tremendous amount of activity. Uh, we re did receive almost $1.8 million in the second quarter sales tax. That is up from last year. However, part of the reason that's increased is because of the uh, fairly new law where the where um, online sales, or sales tax is charged and comes back to school. So though that is going to be an increase from, from now on. We also received the excess cost aid. Excess cost aid is for, um, for special ed students. It's the amount of aid above the, the normal foundation aid on a per, per student allocation. Just want to draw your attention to um, a couple of new things here. On page seven of the report, or page 14, I believe it in your, in your board packet, the general fund appropriations and expenses. Uh, if you recall, it in June, we talked about uh, the reserves and reserve for encumbrances. That's basically open purchase orders as of June 30th. So you'll see an adjustment there of $3,488,000. That was the open purchase orders in June. So all that does is that rolls forward to increase the budget so money is there to pay for those obligations. So that's what that means. And then brand new is the next page is the general fund payroll activity. Those that have been on the board for a long time and throughout my entire career, uh, that has been accounted for in the trust and agency fund. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still in the trust and agency fund, even though that doesn't exist anymore. But uh, the government account, account, governmental accounting standards board changed that. So we changed that in the report so that it'll match um, when you get the audit report at the end of the year. Moving on to the school lunch fund, uh, not much in the way of revenue, but we did have some expenditures, a little bit better than last year. Um, most of what the expenditure difference was from last year is last year we had a lot of repairs. Um, so. The deficit for the month is, is a little bit lower than it was for the same time last year. And speaking of school lunch, I just want to share some quick information. Uh, Paulette gives me participation information. And uh, as expected, if you recall, last year we had to transfer quite a bit of money from the general fund to the school lunch fund. 
and as to be expected, um, we're serving almost three times as many students actually participating, and that's in September, and that usually picks up as you get into the year a little more. And um, sales are up 260%. Uh, so as, as anticipated, it's, it's doing trending what we thought it would. So that's the treasurer's report. Thanks, Darren. May I have a motion to approve the report, please? So moved. Okay, I have Ted and Renee. Any questions? All in. Just oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's right on par. But there's a couple of buildings where it's slightly above and a couple where it's below. Um, but the, and the buildings last year where they were going back to the classrooms to eat, tremendous improvement for this year because they're actually in the cafeteria. Anyone else? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. And I just, in the discussion, I just have a little bit of information regarding uh, our staffing and support services. Um, <clears throat> to give you some numbers, um, in operations and maintenance and buildings and grounds, we are about 19% below what we budget or should be for fully staffed. So that's 10 people short. And we have, in the, over the next two months, four retirements that we know of coming up in, in the next two months uh, in buildings and grounds. Uh, you might may know or have seen Bill Kleiman, for example, our plumber and our electrician, Tom Gill, uh, so those are going to be big holes because they're very talented people. Food service, uh, we should have 27 people. We're short eight people, and we have two people in, in two managers that are due for surgery, and they're trying to hold off to help, to help us keep us afloat. And transportation, um, if you looked at our budget that was approved, uh, a, a typical year would be 105 drivers, and that's what we budgeted for due to the shortage. We made adjustments so that we were hoping we could get by this year with 92 drivers. As of November 1st, we had 73 drivers or 32 drivers short. On average, we're averaging five to eight drivers a day that, that call in sick. So we've had some very challenging times in the last couple of weeks. So I just wanted to give you a quick summary of, of where that stands. Quick question. In the buildings and grounds where you talked about the significant shortages, um, Realizing it's all hands when we get storms and things like that. What will that mean for us? Um, if we do get into some significant weather We're trying to, to hire people um, We're looking at contracting for, in certain areas, but uh, the contractors are having issues Our biggest concern right now is emergency situations and plowing when that comes so we're just hoping snow never comes <laughs> <laughs> If I could just add to Darren's report, uh, and we can report more, we will be reporting more formally on this once it's all ironed out, but uh, we are preparing for those scenarios where we don't have enough drivers um, on a morning run or it could be on an afternoon run. And our data team has been um, working very diligently on creating uh, contact lists for, with parents' cell phones contact uh, guardians cell phones uh, by bus by student uh, so that if something does happen to a bus where it's going to be late um, or um, a different bus is going to have to pick them up uh, there will be a um, notification to all the kids guardians and parents on the bus to let them know what our plan b is and our plan b may be um, that we have to have a driver run two routes and so that may be um, an hour late or it could be a little bit longer uh, that's just the reality that we're working in right now so we'll we'll um, share more formally uh, relative to to what that emergency plan looks like hopefully we'll hear more advocacy on the part of the state with respect to the CDL licensing and some of the ideas that they're trying to generate to create more drivers okay Human Resource Report, Sean. Good evening. First for your consideration is the Professional Staff Report. You'll see we have three certificated staff appointments, one certificated staff increase in FTEs, one part-time to probationary appointment, five school-related professional appointments, one teacher resignation, and one school nurse resignation. We have a motion to approve, please. Thanks, Robin. And Renee, any questions? All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Next for your consideration is the support staff report. We have three clerical appointments, one transportation resignation, one transportation resignation for retirement, one maintenance resignation, and one food service worker resignation. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thanks, Ted. And Sarah, questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Special Education Report, Elizabeth. Thank you. Superintendent's Report, Mike. There is not a need for an executive session this evening. I think that's our first time, this <laughs> maybe this year, um, which is a good thing. Uh, I'd also like to um, uh, ask for your approval um, and formally make a motion to approve the resolution of student discipline appeal. So if I get a motion. So moved. Amy and Second. Jeff. Can I get any, any discussion or questions regarding the resolution? All in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. A uh, couple discussion items. Um, we are excited to have Mr. Vincent French join us on Monday, November 5th. Uh, he will be our equity and inclusivity coordinator. And so currently we're in um, the position where um, we're defining his uh, entry plan. Uh, and then we'll be working with Vincent before uh, the 15th um, to make sure he feels comfortable with the, the entry plan. But uh, my excitement with regards to, to Vincent um, are working with his strengths, which I believe are working with our students. Connect, connects very well with, with kids by all accounts. Uh, and uh, staff uh, and parents. So I think he's going to be someone that's going to hit the ground running, rolling up his sleeves, um, being able to connect well with all stakeholders uh, and be a wonderful conduit uh, to start as he gets uh, used to um, all of uh, um, our buildings and our organization and our parents and our students. Uh, so uh, he will be very busy. Um, we're excited uh, to have him on board uh, we also sent out today uh, information around a student advisory committee, and uh, that will be the, uh, with me, uh, also probably with Vincent and, and possibly with Shana as well, uh, with the goal of providing uh, their perspectives on district issues, especially as they relate to creating an inclusive school environment. Uh, applications are due uh, in two weeks. Our um, hope is to begin December 1st, and we're looking at two students from each grade level from both Menden and Sutherland, uh, which would be a total of 16 uh, total students. So looking forward to uh, bringing them together uh, in a meaningful way, which is also aligned to our uh, equity goals with student voice. A couple other things. Uh, we are being recognized and have been um, acknowledged uh, for uh, the outstanding young people in philanthropy uh, and that is for our work with the rainbow classic uh, so couldn't be prouder more thankful of our community for their generous donations over the air uh, totaling over six hundred thousand dollars and um, our students are directly part of our student athletes our cheerleaders our basketball players our coaches our teachers are directly involved in working with the galaceno children's hospital and over the years, we've done everything from working with uh, the pediatric intensive care unit, uh, the child and adolescent eating disorder program, uh, the teen lounge, shout out to the art department for their work with um, the teen lounge. We've worked with the uh, paleo care. Uh, we're now focusing on mental health. So donations will be going um, in that direction moving forward. Uh, I have asked our advocacy team, our district advocacy team to meet uh, next week, um, either Monday or Wednesday. I think we're still waiting on confirmation for a few uh, with the hope of doing a full court press relative to urban suburban transportation. 
Uh, as all of you know, uh, we have um, been unsuccessful in working with all the entities uh, that are involved with transferring students from Rochester to their home school. Uh, and in this case, the school that is um, feeling it the, the most is Menden High School uh, because that RTS stop was taken away from uh, Menden High School. So we are going to put our um, brains together to see what kind of um, advocacy we can do and whom it should go to. Uh, we have uh, met with uh, Rochester City School District Director of Transportation. Uh, we've met with uh, RTS uh, Director. We've been really trying to be creative and working with other local agencies to see if um, they have uh, drivers uh, because they, have, they also have buses. Uh, that aren't schools that maybe could shuttle our students for um, for a cost or for a charge. Uh, we've um, been unsuccessful at, at every turn. Uh, the The biggest problem is historically, and part of our our um, requirement is to have Rochester City School District uh, bring uh, urban suburban students here, and uh, they have their. Uh, transportation issues. So this is a time when it's not about um, money, uh, it's about um, bodies. So you heard Darren share that we're 30 drivers down. I think they're, I don't want to quote Rochester, but they're a lot more than that down. Uh, and our students are kind of falling through the cracks right now. So as adults, um, we need to do everything that we can uh, to, to try to make their transportation um, a little bit more equitable. Um, the other thing of note is we've also brainstormed things like working with PTSA, having parent volunteer drivers drive students, working with our teachers um, and staff to drive students. Uh, and it, we get into a, a position where um, our insurance company um, would not approve that and all of the liability would fall on uh, the individual uh, drivers. So um, I look forward to, uh, to working with our team next week. The last thing I'll note is that uh, with our federal funds, um, we've been um, working right through all the areas that we um, that were approved uh, for hiring and for uh, spending. And we just uh, finished the posting for instructional challenge and that posting, I believe, closes Friday. So Friday, we should have an idea if we have uh, an internal candidate for instructional challenge. And if not, more than likely, we would have to go external. So with that, um, that is my um, update. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> okay, may I have an approval of the consent agenda, please? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. So old business, does anyone have anything? I do want to mention um, our last board meeting was Board Appreciation Week, and as everyone at the table, um, we had just all this stuff in front of us, wonderful gifts and um, notes of appreciation, but there were two packets I was unable to open and share with the board, so I did so tonight. And I just have to give a huge shout out to Thornell Road because I stand corrected. I said that board members are not paid, but we received checks <laughs> from fourth graders at Thornell Road that are practicing their numbers and their cursive writing. And we have checks for $999,000 in our, in our name. So we're going to go to the bank <laughs> tomorrow and see if these are valid. Um, and but we just, I mean, wonderful. I mean, just great. And then we also received thank you notes, and I don't know where they are right now. They're over here. Um, the most beautiful, thoughtful notes from a few of the classes. Oh, there's more checks. And, just dropped them. And you can see just some of the artwork. Everything was just beautifully designed and thoughtful notes of appreciation for the board. So to Thornell Road, hats off. Thank you so much. Um, we truly appreciated all of the thoughtfulness that was um, shared with us at our last board meeting. So thank you. 
Anyone else for old business? <coughs> New business? No? Okay. Public comment. I don't have any cards up here. Is anyone in the audience here for public comment? Okay. And we did not have write-in submissions. Okay. So with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ted and Sarah. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone.